Hi, welcome back. This is Teacher Paul. I have a special episode today. I'm in the Ashtabula, Ohio area, and I'm at the Lighthouse Baptist Church, and I've asked my friend and the pastor of the church to conduct this episode. He has free reign. He can do what he wants. I'm looking forward. You're going to be blessed. Here's Pastor John Jones. Thank you for watching this episode, and I thank uh, my friend, uh, Brother Paul Scott, Ty Paul, uh, for allowing me to join you today. I just want to give you a few thoughts that are on my heart, so much so that I ended up uh, writing a booklet about this issue. But I think the greatest gift that God has ever given to us could possibly be what we would call the gift of grace. The book of Ephesians tells us that for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Even our salvation has its roots in this matter of God's grace to us. My concern, at least in America, is that people are taking grace and using it for their own purposes, which shouldn't surprise us. That's what our enemy does. The devil himself can't create, but he can take God's creation and try to twist it and change it for his own devices. In the book of Revelation, God seals his prophets with a mark during the tribulation period. The devil himself imitates that with his own mark. We call it the mark of the beast. God created man with passion. The devil tries to twist that and use it in ungodly ways against man himself. And in later, late days, in, in recent days, here, I think one of the tools that he's using surrounds this issue of grace. But what I find is that it's nothing new. As I read the scriptures in Jude, Jude writes, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Listen to this. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, listen, turning the grace of God, of our God, into lasciviousness. That's an amazing statement that people are using grace as a license to sin. And it happens in so many ways. I am conservative to the core of my being. I believe in the King James Bible. I believe in the local church. I believe in godly standards and godly music and so many things. But today, grace is used this way. Well, those things are legalistic. And we're not under the law, we're under grace. And they use grace to give themselves freedom to not go to church, to give themselves freedom to not have conservative standards, to give themselves freedom to use another Bible, to give themselves freedom to do all kinds of things. The truth of the matter is, the word grace itself can never be defined and never is defined biblically as freedom. Because of God's grace, we can be free from sin and so many other things. And I'm grateful for that. But grace itself has to do with God giving us something we don't deserve. Many before me have used an acronym for grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. God giving to us benefits, gifts, kindnesses that we don't deserve. For some to take that sweet gift of God and twist it for their own lascivious purposes 
is just unconscionable to me. And I encourage you, the grace of God brings into our lives sweet things. But let me give you one other text of Scripture if I can. Okay, in the letter that Paul wrote to Titus, he says this, For the grace of God, that's what we're talking about, that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. That text says that grace that brings salvation ought to cause us to live soberly, righteously, and godly. It's not a license to do whatever we want. It's not a license to say, well, I'm not under the law, I'm under grace, so therefore I can define it any way I want. Um, grace is a, one of the sweetest gifts of God. I'm concerned that we don't allow the enemy to take that term and twist it because ultimately it re removes glory from God. Ultimately it harms us and our walk with God and it will hinder our witness for Christ. In that Titus 2 text, the verses just preceding what I read talked about living a godly life in such a way that those who have not experienced the grace of God can see Him in us, as opposed to us using the term to get out from under authority we don't like, scriptures we don't like, that are difficult or challenging for us. I encourage you to embrace the grace of God in a way that causes you to be more godly, more sober, more righteous, in a way that causes you to look for the glorious appearing of our great God, that causes you to be humble and grateful and careful, not careless, about the way we live our lives. So grace is, I think, probably the greatest gift that God's given to us. I'm just concerned that our enemy doesn't take and twist it and use it against us. I hope that's a help to you today. I appreciate Brother Paul Scott more than I get the opportunity to say. So it's fun to get to do it on video. And I pray God's blessing on him and on his ministry. Um, if you want further information, you certainly can go to our website. And uh, the book is there. It's for sale and some other information about grace. Uh, God bless you. And may the Lord Jesus Christ be very real in your life. Hi, my name is John Jones. I pastor the Lighthouse Baptist Church in the northeast corner of Ohio. We have been blessed of God with a number of ministries. We would love you to join us here on the property when you're available. We'd love to have you join us online for streaming services. We'd love to have you at our website. Uh, if there's any way we could be of assistance to you, it would be our joy to be able to do that. God bless you.